This is the second in a series of short videos that outline some of the new features in the latest version of Vic 3D 10. In this video, we'll go over some significant updates to the capabilities of the Iris graphics engine that have now been implemented in Vic 3D 10. Introduced in Vic 3D 9, the Iris workspace provided engineers the ability to quickly turn the world-class DIC data they just analyzed into clear, persuasive media assets for collaboration, publication, and promotion. Now, with the release of Vic 3D 10, the engineers and developers at Correlated Solutions have taken DIC data visualization to another level. We'll pick up our previous project showing the impact of a small caliber projectile into a block of ballistics gel. To illustrate some of these changes, we'll be working with a simple presentation recently exported directly from Iris in Vic 3D 10. It features text, images, 2D and 3D data, and an image sequence arranged over several slides. Now, let's look at how that was produced in Iris. Here we are in the DIC Analysis workspace. Access the Iris workspace by clicking here. Note, if it is a new project, you'll be prompted to pick an Iris template. In this case, I have an Iris document open, but this is a good opportunity to elucidate an important new feature in Vic 3D 10. Notice the multiple tabs under the toolbar. Users now have the ability to maintain multiple Iris documents in one Z3D file. Here, I have a document that acts as a kind of drafting board or repository for collection and arrangement of various assets. From here, I can copy and arrange assets in different ways for different purposes in separate Iris documents. This document is for the video we just watched. To create a new document, just click on the plus icon here, which brings up the template selection window. Give the new document a name, choose a template, or click on empty document to start with a clean slate. For this video, we'll copy each of the five slides that comprise the previous video into our new Iris document. As we go, we will discuss how each was produced and make some small adjustments. Then we'll export a new 4K video file. The first slide is a five second title card with a text field and an image file. The basic operations of the timeline and keyframes are the same, but we've added a play button so content can be previewed easily without exporting. Click the play button or the spacebar to play through the slide and control the speed with a slider above the timeline. You can also click and drag the playhead as before. Note that the keyframes have been enlarged for easier manipulation, and you can now hold the shift key to drag a selection box around more than one keyframe, or hold the control key to manually select more than one keyframe. This allows users to move multiple keyframes quickly around the timeline. For example, hold shift and drag over the final four keyframes to adjust them together. Let's make the whole slide one second shorter. Moving to the second slide, you'll notice that we have several more assets on the timeline. An image sequence, a text file, an image file, and several images of the test setup appear over 10 seconds. Notice the black arrow here. This indicates that there's more than one property being manipulated. Click on the arrow for access to the individual keyframes for different properties. This new nesting feature comes in especially handy when there are many properties, as we'll see in a moment. Let's add two more setup images to this sequence. Go back to the drafting document to copy the new images. After pasting in the new document, add keyframes for opacity as shown here. By manipulating multiple keyframes, we can adjust the timing easily to make room for two new images. Copy and paste the position coordinates and scale for the images to match the other images. Then scroll through the timeline to check the timing and alignment. Note several new keyboard shortcuts that mirror other video production software. Use the spacebar to play and stop and the JKL keys to control the speed of the playback. 
you can quickly move from keyframe to keyframe using the cursor keys. Just make sure to select the individual timeline you're working with. Moving to slide 3, the benefit of nested properties becomes evident. Here, we have the same image sequence alongside a 2D and 3D view of the DIC results. Let's adjust the position of the new 3D axis indicator and then shift the position of the 2D and 3D plots by clicking and dragging. Slide 4 demonstrates a subtle zoom effect along with a fade from the image sequence to 2D, then 3D data. Notice the keyframes for scale, position, and opacity, and how the nesting feature makes everything more organized. For this exercise, let's change the ending of our video. Start by copying and pasting slide 5 into the new document. Delete the logo and move the text up. Need some help with the alignment? Just right-click on the tab to access the individual document properties. An all-new grid overlay feature can be turned on or off as shown here. While here, remove page transitions because we already have fade-ins and fade-outs using opacity keyframes. To add a final logo slide, right-click in the page window and click Add Empty Page. Grab the logo from the draft board and paste it here. Then, add keyframes for opacity and a subtle zoom effect. The last step is to export the video. Click here to find the same exporting options as in previous versions of Iris. In the next video, we will introduce the all-new integrated stress analysis feature in VIG3D10. This feature allows engineers to convert strain history to stress with models defined through a dialog or through JSON files. As always, if you have any questions, our support team is ready to help. Ready to upgrade? Just get in touch with our sales team to discuss upgrading to VIG3D10.